Hello everyone, it's Bob McCraney with This Month in Realty and today I'm honored to have back Jamie Harnish. Now Jamie is with Bosley Real Estate. Jamie serves the Toronto, Young and Eglinton section of Toronto. Jamie, tell us about the market in Toronto. Sure thing. Hello Bob, thank you for having me again. Um, normally I talk about stats uh, with the Toronto market and, and this time I want to tell a, a couple of anecdotes if I can. So it seemed like in a portion of November there was a little bit of a, um, I don't know, like a there was a rise in inventory and it seemed like the competition was maybe being spread out a little bit. So it felt like there was a, a little bit of a lull um, just for a short period of time. But then over the, and sorry, I'm speaking of the freehold market, by the way, the condo market is still quite poor and, and continues to be and, and, and has been for the past number of months. But in the freehold market, there was a little bit of a lull in activity. It felt like it you know, boots on the ground kind of thing. Um, and then yet in the past couple of weeks, I think what's happened is there's been a drop in inventory as we're kind of approaching the holidays, less people are listing their homes, but the buyers are still very active. Uh, two weeks ago, I was involved in an offer night for two different buyers on the same night. Uh, one property got 16 offers and another property got 10. Uh, last week I was involved in another offer night with another set of buyers and uh, in order to acquire the property, which we were successful, thankfully, uh, we had to beat out five other five other uh, buyers. Um, so there was a little bit of a lull and we're kind of back to getting a, a lot of activity on each individual house and unfortunately, uh, the the buyer activity and the seller activity are very much out of whack right now. So. Um, not a terrible time to list a home uh, if you were if a seller was thinking of doing so maybe next year. If they're ready now, might not be a bad time. Interesting. So how is that market globally in Toronto affecting the Young and Eglinton section of Toronto? So Young and Eglinton is, is primarily um, made up of condos. It's a very condo dense area. And so, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, the condo market is still suffering quite a bit. Um, do, mostly due to COVID reasons, it, it seems. So um, when we look at the uh, lease uh, activity, um, from a supply and demand uh, kind of um, uh, look at things, uh, supply is down, demand is down as well. So when you take a look at those things, it actually, the sales to new listing ratio, which is kind of like a supply and demand metric, actually went up a little bit, but it's because the the supply dropped further than the mm. demand dropped. So that's why we saw a little bit of a rise in that number. Overall, the um, when you compare the amount of active inventory and compare that to the number of leases that are happening, so we call that the absorption rate. So how fast are properties being absorbed? Uh, it went up again. So it went from 5.2 months of inventory to 5.4. That's in the lease, um, uh, lease category. On the sales side of things, it's basically the same thing. So the the sale the resale market is a little bit stronger uh the absorption rate went from 2.6 to 2.8 so there was a rise in the absorption rate um but again new listings are down by about 25 percent so um you know sales fell but didn't fall quite as far as new listings so it will make it appear as if the supply and demand metric kind of got better but when you look at things more from a um you know, when you look at things a little bit close, uh, more closely, you can see that uh, the condo market is still in a lot of trouble. Because of those things, uh, you know, I, at first glance, it kind of looked like, oh, okay, maybe the supply and demand trick was okay. So I looked into prices specifically on the rental side of things. Uh, prices are down. Let's see, I wrote these things down. Uh, average price is down almost 8% from September. So that's a big downswing uh, in basically a two and a half month uh, span. Uh, and uh, the median price is down almost 10%. So, uh, and that's on the, on the uh, lease side of things. Sale prices, it's not down quite as much. It's around 5% and 6% for the average and the median, uh, but lease uh, listing prices and sorry, uh, lease prices, so sale prices, I guess, sorry. Just lease prices, uh, when things that are being le leased out are, are down quite a bit in a short period of time. Okay, wonderful. Okay, that's very detailed. Thank you for that. Um, so why would somebody pick Young and Eglinton as a place to live? Yeah, a, a lot of people refer to it as um, like a kind of a new downtown or downtown 2.0. Um, you know, with the exception of access to the sporting arenas, uh, which there are a few downtown, 
almost anything else that you'd want is walking distance if you're living fairly close to Young and Egg. So, uh, you know, unfortunately due to COVID, not everything is open right now, but, um, you know, shops and bars and restaurants and, and eateries and, and different kind of small businesses and those kinds of things, uh, wonderful access to uh, post office, drug stores, all that kind of stuff, groceries. Um, and then transit access is, is quite good. So Young and Eglinton is on our uh, main subway line, which is the Young line, which goes north south to downtown. Uh, and then in a couple of years, fingers crossed, there's been a lot of construction and a lot of delays, but in a couple of years, there's going to be a major east-west uh, subway line coming as well. So mm. Young and Eglinton will be one of, one of those few intersections in the city that will actually have an intersection of two major subway lines. There's only a couple of them in the city right now, uh, and so Young and Egg will, will be one of those ones coming up. So, Okay, so Jamie, how would somebody contact you? Uh, so um, literally any platform that somebody's watching this video on, if you just send me a DM through that, um, I am quite active on social media. So people are probably watching this on Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram. Um, I'm always happy to give up my cell phone as well. It's 416-428-8892. That's 416-428-8892. Uh, you could also send me an email at jharnish at bosleyrealestate.com. But instead of writing all that stuff down, People just Google Jamie Harnish Toronto. I pop up. You'll see all my Google reviews straight to my website. There's all my contact information. That's all right. Perfect. There. Perfect. Will you come back next month? Uh, only if you ask nicely. Okay. Well, consider the invitation set. This has been This Month in Realty. Tune in next month to hear more from Jamie and other real estate experts across Canada and the United States. Take care.